Welcome to the Ruckus Associate Smart Zone Administrator demonstration series for the Smart Zone OS 5 release. Smart Zone OS 5 is a network controller operating system that's available on Smart Zone 100 and Smart Zone 300 hardware platforms, and as we'll be discussing here, the virtual Smart Zone network controller platform. This presentation describes the configuration of the Ethernet port profiles on an access point using the Smart Zone network controller running Smart Zone OS 5. Ethernet port profiles are used to instruct an AP on how to forward WLAN traffic out of the AP's wired interface. So these are for the wired interface on an access point. So let's take a look at the configuration of our AP here. So I have an access point. We'll uh, click the configure button, take a look at what's in here. And if we collapse all these down and get to the model specific options here, we can see uh, we first have zone configurations that are applied uh, that we inherit as an AP when we move into a zone, but we can override those at the AP level. Uh, or we could do this at the zone level on model specific options as well for this one. Now this AP is an R500, so we have um, Ethernet ports. We have two ports here, and you can see here what those ports are, which one's which. Uh, LAN 1 uh, that we see down here corresponds with LAN 1 up here, and it's the PoE port and LAN 2. And what we can see here is both of these have a port profile of default trunk port and it says WAN there at the end. So we're both ports default to a trunk port. Uh, the two options of default profiles that are available on a smart zone when it's first set up are the default trunk port and the default access port. Uh, we'll take a look at those when we look at port profiles in just a second, but the default on most of our access points for these ports is a default trunk port on these. Um, and we can change settings on those and we can overwrite the VLANs here, but we're not going to do that because I want to show you uh, at the port profile configuration screen how we set all this up and what all these options mean to us. So let's go ahead and cancel this and let's go over. We're going to go to services and profiles. And once we expand that out, we're going to need to scroll down to tunnels and ports. So I'll click on this right here. And this will open up a new screen with a few tag tabs. And the tab we're interested in is the Ethernet port tab. So here we see those two profiles I just described to you. We've got the default access port and the default trunk port. They're of type access port uh, for the first one, type of access port. It's VLAN 1 untagged. The only member it's in is VLAN 1. That's because it's an untagged access port, so it can only be in one VLAN. And the other is a trunk port where the default VLAN or untagged VLAN is VLAN 1 and all other VLANs are allowed. So let's take a look at how we would uh, configure some of these if we wanted to create our own. So these are done at the zone level. So we'll move down to our zone and click the create button. And here we get the screen on our configuration for our Ethernet port profile. Now we can give it a name. We can give it any name we want. Uh, let's just, uh, you know, We'll just call this a sample profile uh, just for us to have something here if we want to save this. And we can select which port type. So we've got three port types, a trunk port, an access port, and a general port. So let's take a look at each of these um, based on what the, the update to the screen does for us. So if I keep it as a trunk port, uh, we have one field here. We can select the access network, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And we have the untagged VLAN ID. So we can have a untagged VLAN on this trunk port and every other VLAN that exists from 1 to 4094 can be tagged on this trunk port. So basically we can have all VLANs will be accessible on this AP using this port and anything coming in untagged will be on VLAN 1 and anything on VLAN 1 that leaves uh, out of the Ethernet port will be untagged uh, from VLAN 1. Now if we change this to an access port, uh, once we change this to an access port, we notice that the VLAN members, there's only one here. It's grayed out, it can't be configured, but it auto-populates based on the port type we have here. So an, an access port is an untagged port and it can only be part of a single VLAN. So we can give this another VLAN ID if we want to. So let's say we change it to VLAN 10. Uh, once we do that, we'll see the VLAN membership is only in VLAN 10. Uh, it's untagged, so a lot of this may not have a lot of relevance in the wired 
infrastructure of the network, um, but this is how we set up an access port so that basically everything that comes in through the AP would go out on this untagged VLAN and uh, go out to the infrastructure wired network. So we'll set that back. Now, the, we can change this to a general port, and the, defen the difference between a general port and a trunk port is we can have one untagged VLAN, and then we specify any tagged VLANs we want it to actually be able to use. So remember with the trunk port, it was all VLANs from 1 to 4094. We can just select which ones we want. So for example, we can do uh, from here, we can do VLAN 1, uh, VLAN 6 through 9, and VLAN 20. So we can use commas to separate them. We can do ranges. So that six through nine is a range. So basically now what we have here is on this port, we will, uh, any port we apply this profile to, we'll have VLAN one as the untagged VLAN and we'll allow tagged VLANs six, seven, eight, nine, and 20. So that's the difference there of what these ports are. Now, you notice that any one of these port types that I changed to from a general port to a trunk port to an access port, uh, this, this access network field never changed. So let's talk about what these are real quick. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, the default WAN says that all the traffic coming in on one of these WLANs that is associated to one of these VLANs will just be layer two switched and pass through to the wired port from the WLAN out to the wired ethernet network. So if you have a WLAN that's associated to VLAN six, uh, that traffic coming in off of the WLAN would leave the ethernet port going out to the wired infrastructure tagged on VLAN six. If we do a local subnet LAN option, uh, then we're going to essentially NAT this traffic. So it, it's essentially routed because it, it comes in from the WLAN and gets NATted by the AP and sent out from the AP's interface. So we, we actually change the traffic before forwarding it out to the wired network. And then the tunnel, which is another typical option of when you're going to use this port profile feature, is to put the traffic coming in from a WLAN uh, onto a GRE tunnel using one of these profiles and forwarded perhaps to the virtual data plane. So uh, the option we have here is the default tunnel profile. Um, if we had others configured, they'd be available here as well. Uh, but these are the only ones we have on the system right now. So those are the three access network types we can use here. Now let's change this back to a regular trunk port. And if we go down here, we'll, we'll collapse this and we'll turn on 8021X. So if we turn on 8021X here for authentication, uh, we can set this as a supplicant, meaning we can use the AP's MAC address or a custom value as the username and password for authentication. Or we can change it over here by toggling the dropdown to port-based authentication. And with port-based authentication, um, we're going to have to specify the server we're going to use for authentication on this network. Um, and if we use the use controller as proxy, a request will flow through the controller. In non-proxy mode, uh, the AP will communicate directly with the authentication server without going through the controller. Um, but in both cases, you'll have to have a configured authenticator uh, that you select from the drop-down list. And you, know, you also have to configure the other radius options uh, for the 8021X. So we can see those down here. Now if we go up here and we change the port type to an access port, uh, the, the different authentication options behave a little bit differently. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this up and turn that on again. And when we have an access port and we go to these, we can do port-based authentication, which we already described, and Mac-based authentication. And the difference between these two is that with port-based authentication, only a single Mac host has to be authenticated. And then all hosts that are back on the WLAN are allowed access to the wired network. But if we do Mac-based authentication, each host MAC address has to be individually authenticated. And of course, you have to configure and set up the authentication server. So you have to use the drop-down box to select the authentication server. And you have to toggle or potentially toggle the switch if you're going to use the controller as a proxy for that, just like we had to on the uh, previous uh, example with the trunk port. So now let's go ahead and change this to a general port. And when we change it to a general port, uh, we'll turn this off and turn it on again. And we'll see here the only option we have for the role is port-based authentication. So again, with port-based authentication, uh, we're going to authenticate a single MAC address 
uh, coming in on this uh, port to allow it uh, access for any other devices that are back behind it. And again, we have to set up the authentication server by selecting whether we're going to use the controller as a proxy or let the AP go directly to a configured authentication server, which we select from the drop down box here. So go ahead and cancel this. Uh, and if we did create a port profile, really what we would do then is uh, at the zone level or an individual AP level or an AP group level, uh, we could go in and we could assign these ports on a AP specific configuration to a specific port profile and all of the ports uh, in that collective group or at that individual AP would behave in that manner. So this concludes our presentation on Ethernet port profiles. This is uh, this presentation is part of the Ruckus Associate Smart Zone Administrator demonstration series for Smart Zone OS 5. There are many other demonstrations detailing configuration processes and options. So I hope you come back for more presentations in the future. Thank you.